Dude, if, I, if Mikasa I just comes swinging in, dude, um, that's so good. Who cares about Mikasa when you have <laughs> Levi? You only need have one. Have you ever been listening, woman? I care. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, forget the forget uh, whatever that Japanese old lady is. I want the main MC girl to come in, right? I'm with, I'm like, with Koo. I want Mikasa. The man too. on a mission. Exactly. There we go. I want Mikasa exactly. too. Welcome back to Sokagayo Sundays. This is the uh, this is I'm sorry, fifth episode of the Tag and Titan uh, final season. And actually, I just realized too before we did the other shows, I didn't introduce any of us, so we're gonna set that right now. So I'm your host, David. <laughs> <laughs> Join me <laughs> this week. We got Stratton. Hey guys, I'm a giant fan of this show. <laughs> next we have Ku. Hello, good sir. And next we have Taylor. Taylor, can you say that again? Oh, hi. Yep. And then next we have <laughs> Brian. Sasaki, yo. <laughs> and next we got Justin. Yo. And finally we have Sasha. Sasaki, yo. For the next episode, yeah, like you got to do, do Brian and then Sasha. You know, you nah, do I didn't know they were going to tell. Yeah, I, I totally forgot that to introduce ourselves each episode. So we're going to start that now. So starting this episode, um, Justin actually mentioned something in the beginning's scene that i didn't actually catch so because you mentioned um the when bertho was talking about the old man who hung himself you, mm-hmm. you were saying that was kind of important yeah so something that was very subtle um you know uh, a couple times in this episode we've seen the flashbacks when Reiny, uh reiner army uh annie oh my god just mixing all the names up and uh, Bertolt, you know arrive on <laughs> paradise and they meet this individual who um Basically, his whole village gets wiped out by Titans, but he hides in one of the houses and ends up, you know, hanging himself. And, and Beartold, for whatever reason, just has super PTSD. But anyways, uh, he's talking to Andy and Reiner and saying, you know, why do you think that guy, you know, confided his secret of how he hid from everybody else? And Andy kind of hints at the point that, you know, maybe he was just looking for somebody to judge him and to kind of free him of his guilt and of his actions that he took. And I think that's something that, you know, later in the episode, as we'll talk about with Willie's speech, that was really a driving factor of he just lived with this guilt and wanting to set you know the truth free and so i just thought that was a really cool subtle thing that they touched upon to start the episode off yeah so i, I didn't pick that up at all so i think we have justin here to explain that to people like me who didn't pick it up yes sir and then um the big Can I ask? Very good point. Oh, go, go ahead like was this the first episode where they had like a viewer discretion advised in the beginning of it or i believe so the what? first one i saw yeah yeah i really don't think yeah. i've ever seen that on Crunchyroll? Yeah. Yeah, I was yep. on Crunchyroll. Yep. I was super yep. confused. I was like, is this huh. the thing now? When I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> hmm. Was it because of Aaron's salami leg? Because that was pretty disgusting. So- yeah, man. You know, <laughs> all the other stuff that they've dealt with. <laughs> this is, you know, cross the line. That that did, did. It's like, sir, do that behind closed doors. <laughs> yeah. Bobby, get out of here. Yeah. You're banned. <laughs> So, so yeah so the, yeah i just thought it was weird because like compared to the other episodes this one is really, pretty yeah. tame yeah it's pretty tame so yeah. i think it's just if i think it's just start maybe because it's the beginning of the actual winter season so maybe yeah just doing it from now oh, on i could only think the other time would be literally the first episode when yeah. they first introduced yeah. the show that'd be the last time i think i maybe saw a warning like this hmm interesting yeah so so going on uh, to the episode, the first thing that happens is basically the basement, going to the basement of Reiner and Aaron. And if you're like me and you like, if you didn't, if, if like we didn't have this, these people tell, if all these people telling you about Aaron, like you, I guess that would have been the surprise, like that, that, that Mr. Kruger, whatever it was, Aaron. So I guess that's like the big first event that happened in this episode was getting at that getting the, the actual conversation with Reiner and Aaron going on. Um, just And Aaron just basically um, just, I don't know, like throwing it back to Reiner saying how, like, you know, why did you come to Paradise? When, when, when Reiner was asking him, like, why are you here? Like, it's the same reason as you. I thought that was probably, like, a powerful message to Reiner, just starting off, just um, showing mm-hmm. his intentions. 
One thing that I was always really part, conflicted yeah. by, like right from reading like the beginning of the manga for this part, I was always wondering, and I still wonder now, if Aaron was being 100%, like everything that came out of his mouth, if he was being 100% just like honest and sincere, or if he was being a bit ironic, or if he was being a bit um, trolly. <laughs> um, not the best word for the circum for the very tense circumstances, but basically trolly. Uh, I never really could figure it out. Justin, do you have any thoughts on that? Like, just just in terms of, like, where he's like, I'm like you, we both went through the same thing. And then even after Reiner threw himself, like, on the floor. Yeah, I think that's and... something that as we kind of continue on, it's really hard to know, like, like what headspace is Aaron yeah. in? Like, obviously right now we just see, like, he still has this huge chip on his shoulder and mm -hmm. is kind of just, almost like you said, you know, kind of toying with Reiner of just like, hey, remind me again why you came and, you know, got my mom killed. Remember, that did happen. So now we're going to talk about what you've been doing back here and all the great people, you know, that you have. There are good people, there are bad people, but Aaron just at the end of the day being like, yeah, I don't care. You know, enemies are enemies and I'm going to continue moving forward. And yeah. so Reiner just dealing further with that guilt and just really pile driving in that he fucked up big time. Well, I don't think it's more of a he didn't care. I think he's just he cares like because he's seen from like Reiner's point of view why he did what he did. Mm -hmm. But it's also he's basically like Reiner, like you mentioned, like I'm going to finish my mission. This is what I came here to do. Uh, so, you know, yeah, I, I think it's a yeah. card. Right? Yeah. Just by <laughs> nature of that, though, they are different from each other because Reiner didn't know what he was walking into. Aaron didn't know either, but he's been sitting around living with them for God knows how long. Um mm -hmm seeing seeing all the people so i mean actually they're not the same <laughs> I, think, I think at the end of the day they both realize you know the depth of what they're doing but i think for aaron it's just like he's throwing morality aside like it is what it is at this point we're here it's it's moving forward that's the biggest thing like it's moving forward regardless hmm. yeah. I, I think yeah go ahead sasha i think there's a lot to unpack here um uh, and I, I mean a lot psychologically. So mm -hmm. I'll start off with this. One tactic that many armies have used in the past, and especially I know the Ottoman Turks used, was you'd uh, you know conquer an entire village, kill, massacre, and then all of a sudden you would take the youngest children that shows the highest level of intellect, purposely that were from the opposing side, and raise them to be one of your own. So they forget who they were. And use them against that same, uh, against those same civilians, basically. So it, it'd be like if someone took an American kid and raised him in an enemy country, let's just say China or Russia, right? Not to get too political, but and then all of a sudden they were they were raised with the fact that oh, I'm not American, I'm actually Chinese or Russian or whatever it might be, and then they come back and they wage war on their homeland, unbeknownst to it. So I think psychologically that does a lot to a person because. Aaron's point was, listen, at the end of the day, we are the same. We are blood related because we're Eldians. We shouldn't be doing this. But Titans came and I saw my mother get eaten by them. And I cannot live with that. Like, I don't care what you say. So when we talk about his mind state, I feel like his his mental state is, is not trolly whatsoever. I don't think it's him being, I don't know where I'm at. I think it's him being burnt out from taking the toll of the history of everything that's transpired between Marley and the Eldians and the King, et cetera, et cetera. So I think what you're seeing is Aaron has swallowed the grim pill where he's like, listen, life sucks. Deal with it. The one way I know how to live life is to keep going. And what I think you're seeing is you're seeing the characters. I think they are more similar than meets the eye, but they're, at, they're handling it in two different ways, right? Reiner is just ready to be done with it. He's like, dude, just kill me. I'm ready to get this over with. I think Aaron was at that point, but within the past three years, something has happened so he can stomach this and just say, you know what? I'm still going to do my mission. But now that they're together, we don't know what's going to happen, what type of effect they can have on one another. So that's my take on it. I think there's a lot going on in this episode, which is why after all the garbage I talked about the last episode, just give me more. This is exactly what I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted. So I think that moment, lots of weight and significance to it. Like watch that back. Every single word meant something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think the other key factor that we're kind of you know skimming over between the meeting between Aaron and Reiner is think about Falco in this situation, yes. right? Like, 
And think about all the times that you've like screwed up at work, like the tiniest little thing and like some asshole will make, like sit there and make you feel horrible for it. Like imagine how Falco feels in that man, like in that moment. Right. This isn't even his job. He just thought he was doing like a good deed as a civilian helping a wounded soldier. Oh my god. I can't even imagine how how like horrified he would be. And just the fact too when he was just like, you know, finally putting the pieces together of okay, mm-hmm. Reiner knew Aaron mm-hmm. from when he was on Paradise and he was, you know, using him as the Aaron boy to get these letters past, you know, the enemy lines to his comrades. Um but even Kind of furthermore, the fact when Aaron was just like, Falco, I, I want you to stay and hear this. Like he's teaching Falco a lesson of just the absurdity that has been, you know, these these opposing factions history. So Falco, at the end of the day, he's just really getting the brunt of it. And I, I kind of finally think of like um, that meme of like Ralph from Simpsons when he's sitting on the back of the school bus and he's like chuckling like, ha ha, I'm, I'm in danger. That's like literally <laughs> what I'm thinking. Falco is just like, oh, fuck, like. <laughs> this sucks <laughs> and Aaron's just like yep you're here buddy <laughs> I don't know he's thinking like I'm in danger I think it's he's kind of it's kind of like Reiner where he's thinking like he's going through like his own prior go through his own breakdown of like you know everything he's been thought is a lie as well yeah so that's why I'm thinking about Falco yeah um so that's like and then so that's like the big part of Reiner and Aaron being in the basement and then we had I guess you want to bring up to of um a lot of the other warriors before um, for Willy, like, did a speech, like, a lot of the other warriors were taking away. Like, do you guys want to mention that a little bit? Because I don't know if that's important or not. Uh, yeah. Oh, it has to be. It is important, but, but, but somebody yes. else will take it. <laughs> do you want to take it, Sasha? I don't want to dominate I mean, here. So. Sure. I, this is my take on it. So, um, it's just, this has been planned out. It's it's you can see the level of communication they have. You can see how they've invaded enemy forces unbeknownst to the enemies. And so those letters, obviously, when he said my comrades are here, quote unquote, that was revealed by them being able to remove and isolate the Titans, because that's what they tried to do with Annie back in season one. At the end of season one, they couldn't do it. And then it led to this whole brawl and destruction of a city. So now they've isolated them and. Did you guys see who that was? Who the soldier was to take them away? When they're like, I think I've seen this person so before. Something it's Armin. Like, I can't think of anyone else. Indeed. Yeah, if you pause it at like, Justin, what was the time? It was like 10, 30? Uh, it was like 10 minutes or something. You get a clear picture of the soldier's Yeah, face, you get but... a clear cut view of him with just the brown beard. So it looks like he probably just glued Aaron's facial hair on his own chin. Okay. <laughs> well, that seems legit. Right. Yep. Okay, so we got really Armin. Do we know that for sure? I mean, oh yeah. Well, I, don't I mean, know for sure, thing... but like, it's like the closest okay. thing I can think of. So. For me, it was weird because it's like he hit a girl spur, right? We yeah, that was short the weird part. This man really grew slim dude. like a foot. Right, but I think it's probably dude. because he now has the uh, the the colossal one of the titan. Titans. Yeah, colossal titan. So maybe that's why he grew up so so big. But I don't know. That's just my speculation. I, but I think I'm it's pretty much Armin. I'm just waiting until yeah. they actually show it. I'm not going to worry too much about who it is. Yeah, but where's the castle? That's what I want to know. Dude, for that I, I, I'm not going to lie. So, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. After that first episode and like the whole Jean and his fucking face and a hat thing, I've been looking every single episode super hard at like non-significant things trying to spot like other people. I'm like, mm. okay, where are these other people in this crowd? I'm just looking at every single other character. I'm like... I hate this. <laughs> Yo, Bri, like not, finding, not gonna lie. It's like finding Waldor is whatever his name is. I'm like, dude, fuck this shit. S- same here because um, when Taylor was like, oh, you could totally tell that's John because of his, you know, beard hair. I was like, what? What you talking about, girl? So <laughs> obvious. Like, I don't know what to say to you, okay? I didn't think it was Listen, obvious either. You, <laughs> you were the only person that could spot that out in this yeah. entire call. And Guys, so I definitely knew. That's right. Yeah. You have a, like, and, that's why you wear glasses. You have those good eyes. <laughs> yeah. It's not like I was saying in the in the episode after that, like what you guys didn't see, Aaron, he was right there. Falco even talks to him. It's not like I like. I mean, I know when you can tell when you have enough visual evidence to be able to see. You guys just missed it. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, because because you mentioned the beard, I thought. 
Peck or whatever her name is. I, whatever. Cart yep. girl. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Um, when she mentioned, oh, he has beard hair. My initial thought was, oh, that's John. And then uh, an anonymous person texted me and said, go back and rewatch that scene because they show who it is. And then she said the words, I've seen him before. And so then I thought it was Levi because remember when Levi went beast mode on the beast Titan and he was literally about to kill him when all of a sudden cart girl showed up. So then I was like, oh, can't be Levi. And then we saw the blue eyes, blonde hair always comes back to those blonde. You and your blondes. So. Yep. All right. So (laughs) Brian's right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i'm just saying like looking back at the screenshot of supposedly armin which is probably armin like all these blonde haired blue eyed people just look the same dude. like no I some of them sure. have some of them have more pointed down noses and some of them have more normal uh, ones I, oh I, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's, let's just look totally. at the noses yeah. no, I, I mean I no they have very off. distinctive noses degrees. in this show <laughs> they sure do mm. <laughs> they sure yep. do i have oh, noticed these God. noses yeah. Like the only an nose I've ever jerk. noticed in the anime was Krillin's. Oh, yeah. That's it. You mean a no nose? The lack of nose, yes. <laughs> exactly. So you guys are telling me that Bertolt's honker looks the same to you as everybody else's. Yeah. So Bertolt looks the same as everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> He's just slightly taller. <laughs> Who's that tall dude? Oh, that's probably Bertolt. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> this reminds me I'm of thinking. a time I was in a international... Or a, what was it? it? It wasn't international communications. It was it was something else. It was inter something communications. And we, we had a girl from Indonesia. And they're like, what's something, a stereotype you believe about being in America? She goes, all the white people look the same. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, that's how I feel about Attack on Titan. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Um, besides that. Besides, Chad, that was a tangent. <laughs> besides that. Um, uh, do I want to... Do you want to mention it all about um, Kiyomi, the Japanese girl who's who said something to um, Lily before he gave a speech? Is she, is she important at all? Do we need to mention her? Bro, I I don't think Attack on Titan wastes screen time on people who are mm-hmm. not important. So obviously, Willie and his whole speech last time that that was significant, although that wasn't any of our favorite episodes. Um, but so she was at the party. She gets bl- uh, not blood. I'm sorry. She gets wine spilled on her, and then she's like, "Oh, it's okay." When almost anybody else would have been like, "You disgusting Eldians." So you know, even that in itself, I was like, "Okay, all right, you know, but it's a little sus, but I, I got nothing else to go off of." But in this episode, she's seen directly talking to Willie, and Willie's all like, "I'm I'm ready to give myself up. I'm ready to commit suicide because of everything that's happened." And he did ask General Macbeth, "Yo, where do you think that uh?" Warhammer Titan is and initially I thought it was Willie because I thought he was about to take it on himself but seeing that he you know committed suicide quote unquote um, I think he passed it on to her or whoever had it passed it on to her that's why she was escorted by two bodyguards and was like ha oh, yes sir ha oh, ha we'll take care of the blah 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 so that's my thought I think Kiyomi is definitely very sus wait so you think she's the war uh, the, was it the Warhammer I, Titan I, I think so, because if the Warhammer Titan was in the midst of uh, all that theatrics going on, there's a, they knew Aaron was like going to attack, right? So there's a chance that he could wipe out Kiyomi. And if that that's the case, bam, their number one weapon is gone. But so I think she's like in the corner somewhere. Didn't they say like it was like that one room with all the, the Tyra family? Like it was one of them. Was she in that room? I don't think Yomi, she's no. not part of the, the Tyra family. Yeah, I think she's part of the Tyra family. I think it's only the Tyra family that can only have the the, ty- the war. Oh, the, the that's war a Hammer good question. Titan. Yeah. It's yeah, the, just, my box. The was... point, too, is that we don't know. Well, we assume since she's a delegate from another place that she's not an Eldian and only Eldians can mm-hmm. have Titan powers. Or at the very least, she's not part of the. I'm pretty sure she's not part of the, the lower family. So, yeah, 100%. Know, man. man. Why are they showing her talking to him? And why is she getting escorted by two I don't bodyguards? Know why, but I don't think it's because she's like the Warhammer Titan. I think I think it's maybe because um I'm assuming because she's a delegate from like their version of Japan or some other Asian country. I think um she's just trying to get on his favor for whatever happens with like in international relationships. I think she's just trying to like be like a diplomat. I don't think it's like okay. related to to being like the, a Titan or anything. That's my thoughts at least. I- so, fair, okay, fair. so I do, I do have to check that scene again where they show everybody then. But yeah. 
that was my initial thought. All right. Yeah. So then, so then we gotta get, move on to the big speech by Willie. How he just basically reveals that the whole history is a sham, and um, basically like how, um, like it was uh, was a Carl Fritz. Like he was a true hero. He wanted peace, and that's why he banned, he sent everyone to the island to like to stop. Um, yeah, I think it was the fact that as he was kind of explaining, you know, the history and everything, and how like the Titans have wiped out, you know, like cultures and civilizations and just constant bloodshed. He was saying that Fritz was even tired of, you know, these Titan, the original Titan owner families just kind of going at war. And so he kind of took it upon himself to, you know, with the Tiber family say, Hey man, like I'm tired of this bullshit. I'm tired of all these deaths. It's like, I just want to take, you know, what remnants we have left and the founding Titan power included to this Island where we can just kind of live out like, whatever predetermined set period of life in terms of like a um you know like perfect world scenario where they're just walled off literally from the rest of the world so his speech like it it, it really clears up a lot of like kind of like the the holes i had in the history of this world where because i didn't realize that like what he said like it was 100 years ago that it was only when they got rid of the titans i didn't realize it was yep, that recent years. i didn't realize so it gives perspective of how how dominant the Eldian Empire was and how dominant Titans were just a hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. And also, um, so it kind of makes sense how, I guess, given like if the, the, the Tiber family, if it's that recent, like if, if people respect that family so much for taking down or team up with the hero to take down the Titan, even though it's a lie. So, um, there's like more stuff that happened in the history, but it really clear up a lot of what, like kind of like the holes I had. Going into this, so so that was I don't know, like I'll, uh, I'll also say like the soundtrack during the whole entirety of the was speech, so good, so good, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's like one of the first times this season that I really like. That's one of the things I just kept on focusing on was how good it was. It's honestly the first time this season that I have watched an episode and thought I think this was done better than in the manga. Like I thought everything about this entire episode was just done better. Personally, as a non manga reader, I completely agree with you. Well, it, yeah. it's funny that you say that because that's one of the things that after this episode, as I you know usually do, I'll, I'll go to the Reddit threads and see what's happening. The, uh, there's a lot of manga fans that with the ending of Aaron's transformation and stuff, they were not happy that there wasn't like a soundtrack piece used or like a better one than what Mappa decided to use. But I, for, I, for what? So when Aaron transforms at the end... Yeah. And he like busts out of the building and you know throws like Willy up in the air. They wanted oh, them yeah. to use like a song like akin to when Reiner and Bertolt like first reveal themselves and you know transform. It's just mm-hmm. people at the end of the day like nitpicking over the stupidest yeah, like, things. <laughs> it's well, like, hey, this, that's this episode did a really good job of like clearly explaining the history. I mean, it's been a while since I've read it, but and I was reading super fast, so it could have been me, but like I just feel like the direction it took, the way it told it, was just so much easier to swallow. So, yeah, kudos like, to the like. To I the have director. less of a hard time believing about like about you know an Eldian family like the Wilbur, like the the Tiber family, like being so important. What just knowing that how recent all this stuff happened was. Mm-hmm. So that was very important for me. Just closing mm-hmm. that gap. For sure. Yeah, and I I, I also want to add. I I think. This season, the music has been lights out. There was that, that other episode when we first saw Aaron, um, or maybe it wasn't the first episode we saw Aaron. I think it was the one after that, where basically, like like I mentioned, like there's like a Nine Inch Nails vibe to it. Um, this, the whole soundtrack was amazing. Like I could feel the music. It almost sounded like eerie Christmas music, honestly. <laughs> I was like, ooh, what's going on here? But it adds to the tension. So I, I think they've knocked it out of the park. I'm kind of glad they didn't go with any other type of music, honestly, because sometimes that you get into those fight scenes and then you'll get that really bad English over like just kind of cheesy rock riffs. And I'm like, oh, man, this is the one part that takes me out of the show entirely. So I'm glad they stuck with well, whatever they stuck with. This is like the one show that it's always like the dramatic like Latin choir that goes first and then just the dramatic music. So, yeah, I'm not worried yes. about it for the show. But, bro, you know what detail has got me just, ooh, mama. What? It is all the way back in, like, season one, I think, maybe season one, is when they literally showed uh, Annie was trying to escape from Trost, I think. I'm not sure if it was Trost or if it was the capital. but And when she was trying to escape, 
she left a mark in the wall. And then the post credit scene was the eye of a Titan. And that's when it was hinted at that like, oh my gosh, the walls are made of Titans. And now they just fully said it. One million colossal Titans make up the walls to the cities. And I'm like, oh man, what if our boy Armin gets a hold of those? Wee, wee. Oh, Wait, so I'm very excited to wall? see. So yeah, yeah all all the yeah. side by side, like all the panels oh, of the wall. All three of the walls, all three of them. Yeah. they're all full of the Titans. You, but you think you're you want you think that Armin's gonna somehow like he's gonna be able to to control the class? Yeah, why would Armin? So be hold on, Aaron? wait, wait, wait. Aaron, I have Aaron? some sort of prediction, right? You know how earlier, okay. um, uh, I think it was at the end of season three. Armin, not Armin. Fuck, Aaron. Aaron. Right, he was like thinking like, uh, he had flashbacks of like him touching that one lady that turned into Titan, you know. Yep. And like he controlled all the Titans. I'm predicting this man is gonna fight with what's his face Zeke, right? Yep. And then he's a attain that power to command all the Titans, and it's GG, and then the show ends. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he can control like the warrior titans though. That's the only thing. I think he can control like. Well, yeah, the that's titans, a, he's but... just controlling the million. Like all million are gonna come out of the water. He's, who needs the warriors when you have a million colossal? Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, but then they're all OP. dead, right? Or like in. I, I think like, yeah, they're all so... dead. Or like I don't, I can't. I don't think they're dead. Like it, remember, so here's the tricky thing. Remember Annie, how she hardened herself before they officially like got a chance to stabby stab her. And then right. her dad was like, I don't think my daughter's dead. She going to come back. <laughs> I, I don't think that's him being stupid. I, obviously, that's wishful thinking by her father. I think all those Titans in the walls, they have a chance of coming back, bro. I, that's my suspicion. I, because I'm thinking that when when Berthold does his colossal Titan, like we see him plan times where he turns into one and then just like gets out of it. And then the body is just left there. I think that's what he did for the walls. He just made... He just kept turning in Titans. Or not him. Like, no. It would have been him. I don't know how... Okay, I don't know how he would have made... Someone who would have made a bunch of Colossal Titans. Because I don't think they had the Colossal Titan in Paradise. Well, I think, like, those Titans are, like, just people. Just, you know, controlled to chain link. And then have a wall. Because I think I remember some... Like, I don't know what season was. Season 2 or something. Where, like, the priest said, don't let the sunlight shine on their eyes or some shit i don't know if that's linked to anything i don't know if that like went into anything else i do remember that yeah so yeah. maybe it's just that yeah. like you know you're supposed to have like one person being the colossal titan so i don't know how unless they suck people in they made it they made they had the colossal titan just jump out and then like put new people in i don't know i just think i just like i think there's i just think they're shells but I don't know, maybe. We'll Just see. wait, bro. We'll That's see. A big twist coming. The only other thing... I was a... The only other thing for this episode, for me, is like, I was kind of confused on... The only thing I was confused about the history was like the founding Titan because there's like there's like the the, the propaganda of Marley and then like what actually happened. Because I'm trying to remember like... um, Like, because Car- Carl Fritz, he was the founding Titan, right? Or, or he had the founding f- Titan powers? The, well, the, the founding... Hmm. Yeah, it would have gone to it would have gone to the king because Amir split the powers between all the different. Yeah, it would have been the king mm-hmm. first. So the had, and, then, been the king. But, and then eventually, somehow, like um, like uh, Aaron's dad, he found the fallen titan and took it for himself, or or you know, he took yeah, because when he he took away from like he, the uh, uh, Historia's sister, right? Because mm-hmm, be, yeah, they were passing right? down the founding titan through the royal family, and then. Yeah, Aaron's dad, Grisha, okay, was. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So then, because because the big because in this episode they're trying to put, place Aaron as like the villain, as like he's the one who's gonna mm-hmm. like lead the, like the he's the one who's gonna destroy the world or whatever. So we all got mm-hmm. like combined together and fight him. So I guess that's like the I guess that's like the story they're gonna try to go on here. I'm assuming mm-hmm. I'm assuming that like. Aaron did this on purpose. Like he wants everyone to just unite against him or something to take it off Paradise or something or whatever. Yeah, it's definitely you know the, 
uh, convenience part of having Willie, you know, announce this declaration where, hey, you know, he said it. Now I'm just going to deliver it. It's not, you know, him kind of doing it out of nowhere, it I guess. Very even though Giasses, so. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, though. Uh, that last shot of Willie being up in the air and pretty much bleeding out while Aaron looks like he's going to swallow him. I had no idea that was Willie. I thought that was just like a random blonde bystander. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> sucks to be her. The one time that it, well, you thought it was an important blonde. <laughs> I was just like, who's this old lady he's got? That's oh, man, I'm just like, it's Willie, bro. Come on. <laughs> uh, good times. I thought I don't know. I thought I thought it was like it was gonna be Willie that had like the, the Warhammer Titan powers, and I thought he was gonna sacrifice himself for Aaron, but it doesn't seem that way. So I don't. Re I guess it's just him being like guilt, like feeling guilty too about like the whole situation, like because otherwise he just basically just William just willingly gave himself up to be eaten by Aaron. It just seems it felt a little random, but. Yeah, I've always felt well, that way too. That's that I felt like it was weird too. So like, I, don't I don't think know. he had to die for that. I think he just had Aaron just show up and start causing causing mayhem. I didn't think he had to die. Well, but, I mean, he united the world against Aaron now. Exactly. Plus, you saw how well respected he was. It's like having anybody that's well loved in the political world and they go down. People are going to immediately follow up and be like, oh, what's going on? Who did it? Was it an assassination? What happened? Let's figure out who did this and go after them, which is why I think he made it so theatrical. He didn't have to do any of this, but he brought all the head members there. Everyone who's important in the world was there to witness it, and now they've seen it firsthand. So his words weren't a lie. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't feel sympathy for him only because like, there was a guy... Um, it was one of the founders of Facebook who talked about like years after making probably millions of dollars off of Facebook, he comes out, he's like, yeah, we created a monster. It destroys people's social lives and screen time is terrible for people. I'm like, yeah, you're saying this after the fact, like after you're cushy and you're good. So that's the same thing. Like I would say uh, uh, that Willie's doing it's bro. You, you have lived a good life for so long yeah, granted, you are taking the step to try to atone for those quote unquote sins, but you're doing it when you're just bored with life, basically. When you're like, oh, my time's up, guys. I'm just. You're not, you're not, yeah, you're not like one of those soldiers in the front lines having to actually fight the war for, for Marley or anything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Whereas guys like Reiner have dealt with it, they've been on the verge of suicide, and they still don't know what they're going to do. And all of a sudden, you see the remorse come out, and he's like, dude, just kill me right now. So. Uh, I honestly, this episode was just terrific. It's exactly what I needed from AOT because this is what I'm saying. It always pays off in the long run. So very, very hyped. My body is steaming again and my leg has grown back, guys. Just hope you know. I made a full oh, recovery. Oh, boy. Yeah, it was nice seeing like uh, Aaron and getting it tied back to the Paradise crew. So I'm really excited for upcoming episodes. Ku, I'm curious, what are your thoughts since you seem to have the most uh, reserves about this? Reservations, sorry, reservations. You know, like for the first time, I didn't get bored with the episode with all of its talking and conversation because it wasn't really lore dump. It was just character development, right? And then mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking you guys already know, but I don't really like Rainer as a character, but I do appreciate it, uh, Aaron just because, you know, he's an MC and he's gone through all this shit. And I feel like he's more... Uh, redeemable as the guy who's really powerless, but he's just kind of like you thought he was all talk and he's kind of powerless, but he's slowly starting to redeem himself and be more of a proactive or important character in the story. I kind of thought it was interesting how like throughout like uh, his conversation with Reiner, it was he was slowly pulling this like reverse Uno card, you know, like, do you remember like what you told me? Why did you come to our village? You know, why did you break the wall? And then uh, kind of at, at first, just kind of give you this idea that he was starting to show uh, like uh, empathy towards uh, Reiner and his decisions. And then at the very end, he was like, well, you know, I'm just like you. I'm going to fulfill my mission and uh, I'm just going to do what I have to do, even though I may have some kind of like uh, regret doing so, because I know that innocent people are going to die as well. Like I came here to do my mission. 
So I thought that resolve and like that, comp like that comparison between Reiner and Aaron, I enjoyed that quite a bit. So I actually like this episode quite a bit, but I did think that they probably ended the episode at probably the worst spot because now you want to see what happens now because it's going to be a lot more action packed uh, from this point forward. So I, mean, I don't know about the worst spot because it's a cliffhanger, so I did what I need to. Got you hooked for the next episode. No, I hate those. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the worst spot would have been like right before he shakes Reiner's hand and it just cuts off. It's like, see you next week. I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It, it's it's Willie, and I'm pretty sure he'll survive, right? They didn't show him actually dying. He was still like uh like flying in the air. So if he really is the holder of the Warhammer uh Titan, I'm sure he'll just transform it air. So um I don't know. Oh, so now you're wondering. Yeah. I don't think it's kill me. If it Bro. is, I'll send you 28 oh. pesos, sir. All right, bet, <laughs> bet. And not a peso more. <laughs> not a peso more. <laughs> or less. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start wrapping up for this week's episode. I guess anyone have any final thoughts for this week or any thoughts for next week? Wait where is Mikasa? That's what I want to know. Buckle in. I want to know where say. Levi is. Buckle in. Dude, if, if I, I want to know. Come swinging in, dude. Um, oh, that's so good. Who cares about Mikasa when you have <laughs> Levi? You only need have one. Have you been listening, woman? I care. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right, forget me. Forget uh, whatever that Japanese old lady is. I want the main MC girl to come in. Right. I'm with, I'm like, with Ku. I want Mikasa. The man too. on a mission. Exactly. There we go. I want Mikasa exactly. too. Question for I have a quick question for you, Ku. On your on your waifu sure. list that we did, how uh -huh. high up was Mikasa? Uh, was she not on it? Up there. No, she's not. But, but, she's Levi, on was, list, but sure. Levi was on your Hisbondo list, right? Well, I don't really have much Hisbondo to think about. That's so, fair, that's fair, that's you know, the, 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 the bar was kind of low. <laughs> so, <laughs> but for waifus, oh man, there's a lot of waifus. We can talk about this, but that's for a different podcast. So, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, and if you, if you really think about it, like I think Mikasa, like in her own, is definitely top tier waifu, but uh especially with just the aot universe like i can't wait to see this girl back in action because it's been so long and this is coming from a guy who watched all of season one and then quit halfway through season two so it's been a while since i've actually seen any of of her mm -hmm. like so other than that that That's recap fair. movie uh so i'm just and i want to see like how she grew up right you got Aaron looking like keanu reeves you got armin Hitting his growth spurt over the summer, I guess. Uh, so I wonder how Mikasa's going to turn out, right? Yeah. Is that, is that Spoiler alert. Wondering? You're not going to like it, bro. <laughs> oh, no, dude, no. I quit. Dude, if oh, she God. turns out to be dude. horrible, I quit. All right? You, if you, you, like, like, it, oh. if you <laughs> like that Karen haircut. Yeah, Mikasa going to man, Kasa. Oh yeah. my god. All right, guys. All right. I'm that's out. Only thing I'm gonna <laughs> see you next episode. You know why. That's, I'm out. Yep, that's the perfect place to end. So we're in right there. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next week for Sagayo Sundays. Bye. Oh my Bye, god. Everyone. Bye. Captain Irwin. No. Ah, I got your arm, bro. Give you